before entering the Path Veil Experience. Welcome to the pad. Oh, squeaky voice right off the top. It's Sunday morning, people. We're live. Rankings updates. We got some injuries for you, some shifting lines to talk about. I do want to let everyone know before we get too far into this, smash the like button as we'll go through this. I'll throw that out there a couple times so we can keep the show live every Sunday morning. No cuss this week. He'll return for Wednesday's pick show and the remaining Sundays. So that's either good or bad, depending on what you think of Cuss? A lot of people like Cuss. Some people, not so much. Like the people that unfollowed him on Twitter this week to get into the draw for 20 DK dollars. And next week there'll be another contest where you probably have to follow him back, unfortunately. But this is the time to follow Cuss because, you know, his maybe he'll have an updated Halloween candy list to trigger everyone out there. Uh, there's a lot of injuries for us to get to, but I do want to let people know I'll be back live again Monday morning myself. Chris Meany recapping the games, talking to injuries and waiver wire pickups. 10 a.m on the DraftKings YouTube channel, and we'll be taking your trade questions, your value questions, and waiver wire questions all throughout the show. Plus, later on today, around 2 p.m. Eastern Time, um, on the podcast feed, up on iTunes, and all the places you can download podcasts, and on the YouTube feed, myself, Drew Dinkmeyer, and Mike Leone. Not a big contribution for me, but a season preview for DK Basketball Strategy. NBA is starting up, and the guys from Daily Roto were good enough to come in and hook us up and tell us how to win this year, at least the best ways in order to win. And I do want to let everyone know um, that the odds and lines we talk about are subject to change. So see the website for actual odds. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Gus is not here, but Gary and Thorne is. Hello. Can't get rid of you. No. You're like the plague. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sad. You're sad? I think Brock Osweiler is going to start for my football team today. So let's start there. So Ryan Tannehill suffered an AC joint injury on Friday? No. Because this wasn't really on my radar. He apparently suffered the AC joint injury against the Bengals. And that's why he played so poorly. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Um, now this came up late. He was limited on Friday. Uh, we had a couple of reports or outlets out of Miami reporting that he might have this AC joint sprain. Seems like they're going to test if he can throw a football. Uh, which probably a good way to go with your starting quarterback. The the funny thing really with this particular game is it, I don't think this impacted your lineup all, over, all that much aside from just maybe having to force feed Bears defense. Oh, and we were just talking about that before we came on because I had no Bears D. I like Bears D, but I only played 10 lineups, and I know that they're going to be the overwhelming chalk defense of the week to begin yes. with. I had to go rework lineups. Like, I had to get Bears D in there. If they're going to play Brock Lobster, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The thing is, they still don't run very many plays. So well, you, you could get around it that way, too, that if they're not running a ton of plays, maybe they'll run more because there's no more big plays on the table because Brock Osweiler is starting. It's possible. I, again, it's not just Miami, though. I mean, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It, it seems like all Colts games, you can kind of figure out a way to somehow over, get over in all the Colts games. 160 plays on, on both sides of the ball. Um, the Bears and the Dolphins simultaneously run two of the three slowest offenses in football. So this... This seemed like a contest in general where I was avoiding pretty much everyone. Um, yeah, well, you start Allen Robinson if you have him. Jordan yeah, Howard's the guy long, you're going to have to start. Yeah, in, in season, season long, long, you're going to have to start Howard. You're going to have to start Allen Robinson. That's you're it. you have to start Trey Burton. Okay, those are the three guys. Like, must You might start. even, like, there might be a situation where you have to play, like, Tariq Cohen. But maybe in a PPR possibly, but I like from a DFS perspective, I don't, did, did you have a single member of this game in any of your lineups? Cause no. I didn't until uh, I put bears D in. I, I mean, I started considering that when I started using, cause I had a lot of mix in, or I have a lot of mix in, I have a lot of Todd Gurley. So yeah. that kind of limits what I can do. And then paying up for bears defense when you have Todd Gurley is real tough. Yeah. Cause it turns out he gets to play with skates today. Cause it's going to be real cold in Denver, but I started considering, do I go down from Mixon to Howard and pair him up with the Bears defense? And I decided, like, nah. I, just think it's I, still, I still don't know. I mean, there's there's a chance that this is the game where Jordan Howard finishes with some sort of ridiculous line, like 20 carries, 66 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah. Like, that's a this is a very Jordan Howard game. Uh, but again, I don't necessarily trust that he's going to get even 50% of the snaps. And when we're talking about a game that could likely see both teams run less than 55 plays... Uh, now we're talking about Jordan Howard only getting on the field for like 25 snaps, which, you know, people freak out when they hear Dalvin Cook limited to 20 to 25 snaps. But 
the Bears are basically showing you that Jordan Howard's only going to get 25 to 30. So it's really not that different. So the Dalvin Cook situation, I had initially bumped him back up because it looked like he got into full practice and then it turned out it was a limited practice on Friday, but he's going to play. I have number 15 in the rankings. It is one spot ahead of Jordan Howard, but there's no Chris Thompson for the Redskins. AP is still dealing with a shoulder injury. So in the rankings, I have Tevin Coleman at number 14 because there's no Freeman, Dalvin Cook, Jordan Howard, then Adrian Peterson. Should I have Peterson above those guys? Because I think that Capri no. Bibbs is going to play a whole lot more than people think. I don't, I don't trust Peterson this week. I, I think it was a not a bad script necessarily, but yeah, I, I, I mean, apparently he's dealing with three separate injuries. Um, didn't look great coming off the bye last week. I, I just, I would say that Bibbs is, as strange as this sounds, the safer of the two plays. I mean, I don't just, know if he's safer because we don't know what his workload is, but he's 3K on DraftKings. Well, I squeeze I guess him more of in a DraftKings perspective. Yes. In a, well, I mean, with the, the Redskins in general, there's no Chris Thompson, there's no Jamison Crowder. Paul Richardson and Josh Doxson are still like kind of questionable, iffy. yeah. So like they at eleven thirty, and if you tune into the sweat coming up right after us, they'll have the actual inactives will be off the air just before those come in. We'll see news trickle through as the show goes along. But like I fired up some Capri Bibbs as a comeback uh, in some Cam Newton lives because I like Cam Newton uh, and Maurice Harris at three thousand dollars too, who has just as many air yards as Josh Doxson does on the season, and Maurice Harris has only played one game. Hey. He's three. He's three thousand. Like in a week where it's so hard to jam people in, yeah. like taking a shot, like Ito Smith at three thousand thirty one hundred dollars, Ronald Jones at thirty eight hundred dollars, Maurice Harris uh, and Capri Bibbs are like. Well, that's an interesting debate. I, I would say the Ito Harris versus Ronald Jones debate because we know what Ito Harris's role is going to be in Do this we? game. It seems like he's going to get somewhere between ten to thirteen touches. And he might just be the, be the goal, goal line back. back. Yeah, so that's why I, I didn't play any Tevin Cole. Where there's this weird upside of Ronald Jones. Like, how excited do you think people are to play Ronald Jones? They're not. Okay. Like, because I even discussed this on the Friday show with Leone. Like, what do you think his ownership comes in at? Like, the millionaire makers. Five. Like, five percent? Yeah. Like, he's a great way to save money, but, like, Eckler's down there, and Eckler's just a far more viable option. Oh, but, sure, yeah. But I don't know if he comes with the same upside. Like, I think I, Eckler's scoring, like, 18 DraftKings points per week which is amazing, mm -hmm. considering he's $4,200. But your upside is inherently capped when you play 35% of the snaps. Exactly. Yeah. So with Ronald Jones, I mean, that could be a zero. Could be. Let, let's not throw, like, discount that possibility. But of course. But against this Falcons defense, even if he plays first and second down and Peyton Barber sees the bench, I feel like that's worth the shot at 3800 I would think so. I mean, again, you look at, one, the way they utilized him in week four, where, sure, he didn't play a large percentage of the snaps, but it seemed like he was getting a carry or a touch on a high percentage of the snaps he did play. You know, there is the old-school narrative of coming out of a bye week, you have your rookie running back. Ideally, this is what they've been setting themselves up for all season. We also know that while the Bucks running backs have not scored a ton of fantasy points this season, like I brought this up on the Tuesday show, they did use their running backs, Peyton Barber specifically, in the first two weeks of the season before they just had some insane game scripts. I mean, he was getting, I believe it was exactly 37 carries in those two games. Like, this is not an offense that, that's completely devoid of giving their running back the ball. So I do think he's going to be involved. I think he could also, I know Jake protests that he cannot catch a single pass, but it's not like anyone on this roster, aside from Quiz, has ever sort of inhabited that role. And even Quiz hasn't done it at all so far this season. And we saw at points last year, like, it could have been, like, the way that their offense has been structured through, like, the first few weeks, and then they're coming off the bye, that Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't like to check down. He just no. likes to take shots. That's true. Jameis, far more likely to check down. We even saw when Peyton Barber was starting at the end of last year that it was check down city. He'd be averaging, like, three, four catches a game. If Ronald Jones can get himself to four catches and be the starter, like, perfect. he's going to pay off 3800 bucks. And I think we've seen, too, with Jameis, like, you know, the coaching staff – it's a weird situation because it, it's almost like he's riding in on the white horse because he's replacing Fitzpatrick, but this is someone who's had the reins taken from him in the past. I mean, there were games in 2016 where they essentially said, we don't care what the score is, we don't care what the script is, we're going to run the football for a majority of our drives. Are you excited for New York Giants starting quarterback, potentially by week seven, Jameis Winston? <laughs> that, that would actually be a lot of fun. Um, but Jameis, I'll say it's, it's weird now that we have Bears defense just being this obvious chalk cash play at defense, and I would even say like Texans presents a really nice pivot at three five. You know, it's you, it's but it's such a hard week to squeeze. Like we're talking about guys at yeah. three thousand. We're talking about guys below four thousand sure. that paying up for a defense. It's hard. I, I would just like I have the Cardinals D in most. I was going to say, do you have 
Am I am I crazy in at all thinking about Falcons defense? Siege brought this up on Twitter last night. I kind of like it. They're bad. Tampa Bay, but I feel like this is a game where it's going to be so crazy and pass heavy and points Watch are going to be, be like everywhere. Six, I think the last five games these teams have played in Atlanta, they've on average scored 55.2 points. Uh, these games tend to actually hit the over. I just see the Bucks getting in situations where in the second half they're going to have to throw the football. Atlanta's going to know they're throwing the football. They're going to pin their ears back. They're going to have pressure. And Jameis is going to do something stupid because he always does something stupid. This is a team that already is has turned the ball over the second most of any team on a per-drive basis. One of every five Buccaneer drives ends in a turnover. I, I think there are better options. Like at $2,100, sure. I'd rather play the Cardinals. I'd rather play the Bills. Yeah. And, and and I guess that's that's the case. I'd rather play the Cardinals, too. Um, but in just playing against Deshaun Watson, he's going to score points. That's fine. But he's going to get sacked six times. Yeah, that's true. And the Bills can generate pressure. What's the over-under sack total in that game? Uh, I can look that up. Well, Seven and a half? I guess, yeah, with Josh Allen on the other side. Let's see. Total sacks. I can go look that up here while we talk. Um, the other guys at running back, uh, Isaiah Crowell looks like he's going to play. That's not for sure yet. I still like Powell better in that shot. But yeah. it's hard to go to Powell. As yeah. like a standalone, because it's, it's going to be a split. I would say he's like sixty-five percent. That's and like you mentioned, how it's lot, been tracking a lot of plays in that game. Sure. So you think the pass catching back would be on the field more often? Uh, and the other one, Sony Michelle looks like he's going to play. So don't worry about Kenyon Burner. Yeah, they're both top fifteen plays. James White's probably a top ten play. Uh, the only other one at running back that we don't know about. Oh, Crowell is active. Crowell is active. Yep. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so the rankings don't change. The rank I have Crowell number twenty-five, Powell number twenty-four. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, I mean, really, the only thing that was changing here was Powell might have inherited the goal line carries, which would have been big. Well, if there if there was um, if there was no Crowell, like oh, sure, I, I yeah. probably would have bumped Powell up to like number twelve in the race. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, but, but Matt Breda, who is a true game time decision Monday night, what do you do if you have him? Like, what if what if you were relying on Alfred Morris? You want to go pick up Alfred Morris? Yeah. Or if you picked up uh, Usechek in the PPR. I, I avoid. really get the sense that Breda's not going to play in this game. Me too, but... Um, I understand why you'd have to take that risk, but I think... I mean, if you're in a situation where you're having to start Alfred Morris anyway, that tells me that you probably don't have many better options on your bench. Like, I don't know what your alternative would be to Alfred Morris, and I think that the likelihood okay, what if of you Breda go, playing... What if you could go pick up Edo Smith right now and play him instead of Alfred Morris, not knowing about the Breda situation? Do you make that move? I think I might. I think I would just... I think the upside for Edo is higher anyway. Just play the guy who's going to play? Yeah. All right, let's take some questions here. We're going to do a full question and answer period around 11 o'clock. Maybe a little bit earlier because there's no cuss to weigh us down. Probably the most informational Sunday show. Likely. That we're going to have. Probably the least amount of fun. How many dings do you think he's hitting right now? Oh, my God. A softball tournament? Who knows? So many dings. Uh, First question comes from Mark. Full point PPR. Need one. Geronimo, Kiki, Corey Davis, and Godwin. I guess we should talk about the Packers guys, too, because yeah. Allison and Cobb are still real iffy. It looks like they're both not going to play. They practice on a limited basis on Saturday, but that doesn't really tell us anything. Yeah. They did that last week, too. I'd say Allison has a better shot of playing. It seemed like he was trending a little bit better, but yeah. But w- with the, all of these guys sort of being kind of like equal all around the same range, I wouldn't hold out for the guy who may or may not play. So let's cross Geronimo off the list. Yep. So Kiki, Davis, or Godwin? It's probably Davis. Yeah, I can understand why you're having trouble because it's a terrible matchup. And uh, Kiki and Godwin both have really good matchups. Yeah, but, I mean, we're talking about the clear number one option on a team. And and we said this in the past when it comes to Davis having bad matchups. It doesn't seem like Marcus Mariota has that filter that realizes that something's a bad matchup. Like I think he'll just continue to force feed him the ball. I mean, Jimmy Smith is a fantastic corner. I believe the Ravens have held every receiver they've faced under 70 yards so far this season. Like They've been exceedingly good. But I can just see playing Godwin. If you want to get exposure to that, like I'm playing a ton of Godwin on DraftKings. Sure. And he's got a touchdown in every game, I think. Except for the last one, when Jameis came back. And that's the thing. My worry is just that he was so hyper-utilized in the red zone with Fitzpatrick. And a small sample, one game, but it, it just didn't kind of carry over. Sure. O.J. Howard's back, too. So that kills Cameron, yeah, Cameron Bray Chalk Week. Now it's Austin Hooper Chalk Week. Or C.J. Uzama. I'm playing zero Austin Hooper. I think I have one Hooper lineup. I, I just had a full-out Falcon stack. I, I just feel like you you make your choice on that one. Do you want to bite the bullet on Austin Hooper, who could legit score zero points? Oh, of course. It's not a great situation to play any of these, like, underwhelming... Like, last week was a good... 
when everyone played Vance, switching on to Austin Hooper last week made a lot of sense because yeah. no one was using him. Like this week, I'd almost switch back onto Vance McDonald. It's tough because no one's using him. It now. seemed like every bit of possible variance and value we had at tight end was taken away. Uh, I mean, it seemed like on Thursday we.